Hi, I'm Bill Kinney, and this is video number 31 in my series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing. I thought the last video was going to be my last video on the sub-series on decimals, real numbers, and percentages, but I decided to make one more video. So this is, I can grab this piece of paper here, video number 10 of that sub-series. Video 31, decimals, real numbers, and percentages, with an emphasis on calculator usage, part 10. Now I'm hoping this will be the last video of that subseries, but I guess I shouldn't make promises. And what I wanted to do in this video is um, I thought it would be good to go back to the number line and talk about comparing numbers on the number line. Um, what I mean by that is is how do you tell when when one number is bigger or smaller than an, another number? Um, and let's start with a rational number example. Um, now, where do 13 thirtieths and 46 105ths, I guess is what you said, would say, 46 over 105, where do they compare on the number line? And if you try to do a little estimation in your head, it'll quickly become clear to you, I hope, that it's not real clear where these fit. <clears throat> They're both a, a little bit bigger than one third, for example, uh, 10 thirtieths would be one-third, that would reduce to one-third. And let's see, with this one, uh, 35 one-oh-fifths, 105-fifths, 35 over 105 would also reduce to one-third. These are both bigger than one-third. Um, they're both bigger than two-fifths as well, which is 0.4. Uh, 13 thirtieths, for example, 30 times 0.4 is going to be 12. 12 thirtieths would be 0.4. Uh, 105 times 0.4 is going to be 42. Uh, so this is also a little bit bigger than 0.4 as well. So how do you compare them? Which one's bigger? Well, the quickest way is to do it with your calculator, but um, let me show you that you can also compare them without using your calculator. And that's the way to, the best way to compare them without a calculator although maybe you want to do the arithmetic for this with a calculator, is to find a common denominator. Um, it's not too hard in this particular example that I picked. If you if you double 105 to get 210, 210 is a multiple of 30. So 210 is in fact the least common denominator there, the least common multiple of both 30 and 105. You could try prime factorizations to help you figure it out if it's not clear. You could also multiply both numbers, the 30 and the 105, times each other to get a common denominator that would not necessarily be the least one. But um, 210 is the least one here. I've got to multiply 105 by 2 to get 210, so I multiply the 46 by 2 to get 92. I've got to multiply the 30 by 7 to get 210, so I also multiply the 13 by 7. 13 times 7 is going to be 91. And there you see that this one is the bigger one. So we would write with inequality notation that 13 thirtieths is less than 46 over 105. Therefore, on a number line, they'd, uh, the 13 thirtieths would be to the left of 46 over 105. They are pretty close together, as you can see. What are they as decimals? And this illustrates another way to compare them. 13 thirtieths. Think about this for a second here. This is supposed to be a repeating decimal because it's a rational number. There it is, 0.43 with the, evidently with the three repeating, and that in fact is true. The three does repeat. So the calculator doesn't prove that. Theoretically, it, you know, all, for all you know on the calculator, it could stop somewhere, but in fact, it will repeat. And then 46 over 105 is a little bit bigger. Here we go, 0.43809523812381. Looks like maybe, it's hard to tell for sure, but maybe once we get to that 8, then that's repeating the previous 8. I do see that the next number, the next digit is a 1. In reality, it's probably a zero, and then the next one is a nine. 
Um, should I assume that's true? Probably not. I have a computer program that will help check it for me that goes to more digits than my calculator does. Let me just write this there initially. Let me try my computer program that I'm not showing you. 4380952380952380923. So that is the repeating part there, the 809523. That part repeats forever and ever. So they are pretty close on the number line if 0.43 is there and 0.44 is here. Then point four th with the three repeating is going to be one third of the way from point four three to point four four, uh, right about here or so. so that would be thirteen thirtieths. Point four with the three repeating, and then this number we just have to estimate point four three eight would be 8 tenths or 4 fifths of the way from 0.43 to 0.44 right about here and it's going to be a little to the right of that. Maybe right around there is going to be uh, 46 over 105 which again is this decimal here. I won't bother to rewrite that. What about irrational numbers? How do you compare irrational numbers? Well, um, Sometimes if you've got like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, which both happen to be irrational numbers, well, that's easy to compare because 2 is less than 3. Therefore, square root of 2 is less than square root of 3. I'm sure something like square root of 2.001 is also irrational. So something like this is true. But what if you've got it in decimal form? Take an arbitrary looking irrational number here, 0.512707743. It could have a pattern, but it wouldn't be a repeating pattern. Um, even patterned irrational numbers are sort of rare in a sense. I just want to make this look like it's sort of random digits. Goes on forever and ever. And let's say we had some other irrational number, and let's make imagine that it's really close to the to the preceding one. 0 0.512707743. Well, if if they're different somewhere, if they're they differ in just one spot, they're going to be well. If they are irrational, at least they are going to be different numbers. That doesn't contradict the fact that sometimes decimal representations are not unique, but if they're going to be irrational numbers that are different, they're going to differ in some spot. Maybe it's here. Now the numbers after that could be arbitrary again. Maybe I'll, just for the sake of making it uh, be similar, maybe I'll go ahead and, and make these be the same after afterwards. Just pretend that all the decimals after that point are the same. Which one's bigger? Well, obviously, hopefully it's obvious, this one's bigger because it's got the bigger number that's in that one spot compared to this one. Can you find numbers between them? If this one's bigger than that one, there should be numbers between them. In fact, infinitely many numbers between them. Yes, you can. For example, here would be a number between them. I need to, I could pick a zero or a one here. If I pick a zero, well, I could pick a 3 next, but picking a 4, for example, next will make sure it's bigger than that number. And because it's a 0 here, it's going to be less than that number. And then I can pick arbitrary digits after that point. I could have also picked something like this. I could have put a 1 there, but then I'd want to make sure whatever I put after that point is less than 3, 8, 9, like 2, 7, 5. Okay, so if you're focused on the decimal representation, that's how to find, find out which one is bigger and find numbers between them.